Hi, Resonating Hearts group. Thank you so much for your comments and your action on this page. It's so cool to, to get to know a little more about who's in here and see pictures of the animals and reconnect with some people I haven't seen for a while. And I decided to make a video today because I wanted to share some of what happened yesterday when my horse Annie and I co-facilitate a session. And she probably is the most nurturing horse that I've ever met. And I feel so lucky that, um, that she's on my team. And I really value and appreciate the information that she offers and her participation in sessions. And yesterday... Um, we were working with a client who is a horse person, very familiar with being around horses. And I was holding Annie and she was actually putting a saddle on her. And I was noticing that after the saddle was on, Annie started um, really compensating in her chest muscles. I'm not sure if those are pe pectoral, pectoral muscles or not. I guess maybe I should look that up. But, um, and they were each side would sometimes tighten and loosen sometimes together sometimes independently um, and her eye didn't look withdrawn or hard but there was just you could tell that sh she was dealing with something and so um, I've never with her actually I don't know with many horses I've not really been in front of them watching when they're getting girthed up or cinched up to see how that might affect their bodies and because of where my heart has led me what I've resonated with is really paying attention to those those um, I don't know if symptoms the right words what the horses are expressing and of course that that's how they can communicate so I just kind of filed that away that um, you know I'm gonna kind of investigate it and play with it I know that Annie has some um, inability to bend and flex at times and that will influence her movement and sometimes her desire to go forward um, which coupling with the client that we were working with yesterday um, we can all get stuck in our stories and um, sometimes she gets a little more addicted to her stories than than some people might and so she was up on Annie and I was leading her around, um, helping her get here and in the moment and reconnect into her body. And she was sharing a story with me. And parts of the story I had heard before, not that that's really important except just to illustrate a little bit that it was um, it was something that, that's repetitive, that she plays over and over, that it might have gotten into the neural pathways that, that she's got inside. And so... Um, we walked and when she tells her story, she is, um, there, there's a different energy when she's up on the horse. It's less intense. Um, I think because of the horse's movement, she can move through the story. Um, I don't know if it's easier for her, but it, but it's a little quicker and it looks easier externally. And so we were going around the arena, and I like to go in figure eight sometimes, um, like an infinity sign, because I think that helps incorporate both hemispheres of the brain. Um, but anyway, we were walking around like that, and she was telling her, telling me the story, and Annie got to a point, and she stopped. And sometimes this is because she gets kind of a little hitchy in her hind end. Um, in this case, I could tell that it was because that was enough. And fortunately, um, I looked up at my client and she said, yeah, it's enough, isn't it? Um, because she's, she's worked with Annie a couple times and, and understands the, the process. So because of a lot of the signals that Annie offers and I'm not sure again that signals is the right words, but a lot of the communication that she offers, um, she helps me to really be able to read a situation and help a client with her assistance, Annie's assistance, get, get to a better place than I ever could by myself. And so after my client recognized that, all right, it was time to move on from the story, um, 
I invited her to think about how she was going to feel on the other side of, of this story and what she wanted to incorporate into her being and into her existence. You know, how does she want to feel every day? What does she want to do? And so she kind of thought about that somewhat as I led Annie around. And this time, um, she was quiet. And I could tell that she was uh, more focused inward and more connected mind and body from how Annie's gait was because she was more fluid and flowing um, and I didn't feel, she just didn't feel as clunky, um, if that makes any sense. If it doesn't make sense, leave me a comment and I'll try to explain it a little bit better. And I also was interested in knowing when I was describing, you know, watching Annie's chest shift and how um, we've been doing a lot of release work with the horses here and what that looks like. Comment too if you'd like me to do a video of that. Um, I know quite a few people in here have seen that happen, and so it, it's not new to them, but if anybody would like to see it, I will gladly figure out how to make that happen. And that was that was another thing that I, that I was going to include. I mentioned to this client what Annie's chest was doing as it was happening, and she had said just before that, she made a comment about how... Um, Annie didn't seem to fill up with air quite as much as she had before because, you know, we usually put the saddle on, move the horse around, check the girth again. And we hadn't moved around or anything, but she said, well, she just feels like she hasn't blown blown up any. And I said, oh, that's really interesting. And I noticed, you know, her, her chest and how much she was compensating as you were doing up the girth. And she went right back into talking about how... Um, how she hadn't filled up with air. And I, I was mentioning, mentioning this because, you know, this is something that my heart really resonates with to listen deeply to what the horses are telling me. And whether it's a horse that I'm working with on my own or it's a horse in a session, I really try to listen to what they're offering in a way that can help the client in a way that can help the horse also. And so there could have been a time, because I think when when we go into these places where our heart really resonates, we also make ourselves really vulnerable, because this is really important to us. To me, it's really important to, to honor the horses that I get the privilege of working with and, um, and be able to hopefully add something to their existence rather than, than just take without paying attention to what their opinions are. And so... I could have when she just kind of completely didn't even acknowledge or pay attention to what I said, um, I could have felt like, oh, well, maybe that doesn't really matter or I'm crazy to think that because over the years I've thought a lot of times that, ugh, because it, what, the kind of things that, that we're talking about here in this group and, and now in this video, um, they're not yet mainstream and a lot of people don't quite understand um, what I'm talking about or looking for and and what we're we're doing when we want to pay attention to how the horse um, experiences something um, but instead I just kind of noticed that well she was pretty stuck in her own experience and it, it didn't really matter if she validated that this was a pretty interesting experience um, and of course, I'll I'll check it out later and and report back if I find anything interesting. Um, so, I think that some of the things that Annie would like to let everybody know is to really make sure you follow your heart and pay attention to the to those nudges and what you feel drawn to investigate or pursue, because it can lead to really profound experiences whether they're just for you, whether they're for somebody else, but you know that we are all connected and even if we fill up our own hearts, um, it's going to help make the world a better place. So Annie and I, thank you for watching the video. We look forward to your comments if you want to see the release technique or um, if you didn't understand, I think, something I said. Anyhow... <laughs> All right, but I'm not going to do the video over. So um, follow your heart and 
add more joy to your day and I will see you later. Bye.